Take you to Davos now, where we are nearing the end of the World Economic Forum Day. Team SA is there with an objective to secure investment to boost its ailing economy and create jobs. Let me take you to ENCA's Devin Murugan, who is in Davos and joins us live. Devin, I believe you are joined by the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Naledi Pando. What are you guys talking about there? Yes, indeed. Good afternoon. We are here. We afternoon. We are here. We've passed the halfway mark at the World Economic Forum in Davos. As you well know, ahead of this uh, uh, voyage to Davos, Team South Africa pretty confident that they would uh, gain the attention, capture the attention of investors here uh, to, uh, uh, in, in aims of actually trying to get uh, some investment being uh, boosted on the other side, which is South Africa. And as you said a few moments ago, to get the economy active, to get the job situation sorted out, you will need investment. Let's track now what had happened over the past few days and find out from uh, the International Relations Minister, uh, Naledi Pando, how things have went so far. Minister, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Um, I mean, needless to say, the South African delegation is smaller compared to years previously. I wonder if that made any difference to the contribution you've made to the broader World Economic Forum Davos narrative. Um, well, I think being a smaller delegation of ministers has meant more work for each of us. And we've been able to continue to make the connections. There are periods when you are uh, in the various uh, lounges and you meet and network with many more uh, people than you might in a panel session or, or other uh, open uh, sessions, plenaries and so on. But I, uh, what we have done is make sure that we are present, that we are speaking to as many people as possible, that we are reaching out to existing friends making new friends as well, so talking to leaders of countries that we may not have strong uh, links with as yet, Estonia and so on. So I think uh, the team has been working hard and, and working very well. I want to talk about the contribution um, or, or your, your capturing of investment on, on, on various issues, but perhaps let me just start by asking you about our contribution to the big topics of climate change, of inequality, on the stages of the World Economic Forum. Perhaps we could have had a greater presence in the, in the broader discussion, you think so? Well, um, it's not just a government that is here. There's a large uh, business uh, delegation here as well. And we're sharing the South African story but also uh, reaching out to attract uh, people to, to South Africa. And I think uh, we've been able to do that, all of us uh, together. I, I've uh, felt we're a very coherent team. Uh, I've been in some of the sessions with some of our business leaders, and uh, they speak the South African story. And what we have done, as had been uh, agreed, was that we will outline the challenges that we're confronted with, but also set out the opportunities and our intention to work as South Africans to build our economy, to grow it, particularly to grow uh, the jobs uh, uh, sector on climate change. We've shared uh, the message that my colleague shared at COP25, uh, which is really around the need for more to be done to support developing countries, that we recognize our responsibility, that we must respond, we have to reduce emissions, we have to adopt new practices, we have to ensure uh, that we are working with the rest of the international community to build a more sustainable world. But we've said alongside that, the responsibilities are and can only be executed in a differentiated way because we do not have the resources nor the access to technology which much of the world uh, uh, may have. And thus we do believe the developed countries, which have made the greatest contribution to the dismal position in which the world finds itself, that they will take on the obligation of finding resources and really honoring commitments that they have made previously. We've been communicating this as well as sharing what South Africa uh, has indicated it will do 
to address its responsibilities. When I spoke to you at the start of this conference at the uh, South African evening and I asked you what do you anticipate to be some of the big pointers, challenges, questions directed to you by business people and, and executives here, potential investors, you pointed out to me that the energy challenges back home for businesses to put up factories and make sure their businesses turn all the time is the big one. You've pointed to corruption as well. What were you asked pointedly over the last three days here in Davos? Well, certainly uh, the question of energy has come up. Uh, corruption far less to my surprise. Uh, however, uh, there is interest in what South Africa will do when it is chair of the African Union. That really dominated a lot of the conversations I had with my colleague foreign minister here in Switzerland, ministers from other countries, all are asking about the African Union, about issues of peace and security on the African continent, and know quite a lot about the continental free trade area. And they want to know how ready Africa is to implement. Did you convince the investors that they won't have energy problems in future? Well, I outlined to them, as did my other colleagues, that we are taking steps, uh, that it's not going to be an overnight uh, uh, set of uh, remedies to this, that it's going to be a hard slog, but we have energy in South Africa. There will continue to be problems, I think, of outages, but we are working at ensuring we have a secure supply. We also indicated to them the opportunities for independent power producers, and I must say that piqued a lot of interest uh, because there are many uh, private sector companies that work in the energy space, and quite a few of them did not appear to be familiar with South Africa's integrated resource plan on energy, nor the opportunities available to the private sector. So that was, I think, a very important uh, contribution that our presence made to an understanding of, of South Africa. I also found that uh, there are many people who have visited our country, and several of them were saying, what a beautiful country, so much to offer, but you need to do more about communicating uh, uh, about South Africa and what it offers the tourist, because this is a real job-creating uh, sector. Very briefly, and this is my final question, Minister, what do you take home with you from DeVos 2020? We've got an economy that is barely growing. We've got 10 million people out of jobs. Did DeVos 2020 provide any type of material that we can take back and somewhat change that? Well, what I, I uh, picked up is many countries are confronting the problems we are. Many countries are seeking solutions. A lot of countries, both developed and developing, have a youth unemployment problem. And many are saying the answer is youth entrepreneurship because there may not be the jobs uh, that we all talk about. But what we've got to do is support young people, provide them with the financial and other support in order for them to become successful entrepreneurs who create jobs for others. So I think um, I was happy that already our government has realized this is a direction in which we should go. So uh, I'm going to be going back home really pushing uh, the need for support to young entrepreneurs, talking to my colleague in small business uh, development to say this came out as a key issue. We should do more about enterprise formation. We should do more about incentivizing young people. And of course, as government, and particularly the president leading, we should ensure we make a success of our chairship of the African Union. Minister Naledi Pando, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Well, there you go, uh, Tullus, uh, the International Relations Minister Naledi Pando, pretty much summing up the message they'll take back, of course, uh, when the delegation enters South African space. Nothing much would have changed in terms of the challenges we have on the electricity front, on the inequality front, on the jobs front. Um, but, of course, we, we certainly hope that DeVos provided some sort of impetus uh, to start changing that.